the circumference of a burger or the girth. Welcome to the geometry version. Girth. So we're talking about uh, uh, Major League Sports food. We also are. When you go to the baseball parks? Yeah, when you go to the either a baseball game or I'm sure a hockey game, football Any game. Any of them. You know the cliche, the peanuts, the the, the peanuts, the popcorn. The hot dogs. The, the nachos with a cup of cheese. You know... That's not real cheese, by I the know, way. but it, you know what? That really grinds my gears. I, I know it's a trademark. I know it's... I just can't stand when they serve like... They should call it chips and cheese. Don't call it nachos. Yeah, those are not nachos. Yeah. I well, watched this so person... What, it make, other toppings makes it nachos? Well, I mean, yeah, they got jalapeno, but with the way they serve it. I mean, if, if nachos are is a, is a platter of chips with some cheese. Some shit already and, on there. Yeah, yeah, some stuff on there. Stick they give you the like oven. a little bushel or a basket of chips and a little side of dip sauce. Come on. That's yeah. not nachos. That's chips and queso. And that's something. And Come you know, on. And you know what's crazy? That's what, that, you get that at like a high school football game? Oh, yeah. For like two bucks? Two bucks. And then you get that same exact thing at like Cowboys Stadium. For 200 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it'd be like eight bucks or ten and bucks. And a couple of jalapenos for something like that. Well, and you know, you, you, you joke, but so last week I got free tickets from my company to go to the Rangers game. And uh, it's the new stadium, right? It's the new covered stadium. How was it? Uh, it was great. Oh, it, it looked, it was, it was wonderful. Was it, it actually reminded me a lot of Minute Maid Park in Houston. I don't know what they call it now, but. but That's uh, the Minute Maid Ast- Astrodome. It's the same thing as the Astrodome. Uh, no, yeah, no, no, not at all. Anyway, it's a beautiful stadium. It is, and uh, I wanted to see the stadium. I wasn't. I'm not even a Rangers fan. I mean, so I know if there's Rangers fans out there would be like, really? And dude, these seats were nice. They weren't in the lower. They weren't the lower deck, but they were the next. They were the mid level deck, and it was really nice seats. Right. All right. Hold on. What? So what's that? I had. I had a chip. And I ate it really loudly in the microphone, mm-hmm. and the producer looked up at me, and I totally blamed Jeff. Oh! And then he picks up a chip and did it and did it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, validated. <laughs> the first one was not me, though. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Paul. Nice. The first one was me. Was. Anyway. I'm so sorry. yeah, so I so I, I got I got four great tickets. I so I took the family. We had parking pass and everything. So I mean, how can you pass that up, right? I mean, granted, it's an hour away, right? But whatever. Is it? Oh yeah, it's yeah. forty five minutes. Right? It was well, it's fifty fifty minutes, right? So closer to an hour. Anyway, so I mean, but it was fine. It was fine. So we went out there and and parked in a great parking spot. We walked over there. I was excited, and we we need to eat. We didn't eat before we went out there, right? Mistake Ooh, one. Man. But well, it is a mistake. But part of me was like. Tickets are free. Parking's free. Let's go to the stadium and let's do it right. Like the experience. Like, yeah. Like let's like, let like, let's splurge. Let's. Look, I'm on. I'm. I'm with you. So I you're want, like. I wanted, I'm with you. Yes, so you're like. I, let's I, splurge and get us a really nice meal. Right. And what'd you end up with? Five hundred dollars. Okay, so so my poor <laughs> wife, like the line's really long, and we get impatient, and she's like, "I'll just stand in line Is and I'll to te- go to the bathroom, and I'll text you when I'm getting close to ordering." And so that you can help me help me carry the stuff to the to the uh, seats, and she'd be so sweet. Anyway, so we went down to the seats and checked it out, and we were like looking around. We're like, "Wow, this is a great stadium!" Anyway, so I got up there and went back and joined her. This in line. was the brand new stadium. Brand new stadium. Wow. So we get four of us. So we get four regular hot dogs. Uh, no hamburgers. Four hamburgers. Four fries. Three souvenir cups and a regular cup because my wife's like, "I don't need a souvenir cup. Like she's gonna save money." Right. All right. I want you to guess how much that was. I think I already told you guys. Say it again. You did. So it was a uh, it was a uh, four uh, hamburgers. Four hamburgers. Okay. Uh, and they were like not nothing Just special hamburgers. Generic high school like football. Generic high like school hamburger. football burgers. No. And and cups yep. cups yep. of French fries. Nothing more. Nothing more than a, a McDonald's hamburger, uh, so to speak. Was Actually, there, McDonald's a, a, a double quarter pounder with bacon would have been way better. Was there a condiment? Way bar? better. Was there a condiment bar? Uh, no, they had to hand us packets of. Right, so you got a bear burger, and then no you pickles, had to dress it yourself. No tomatoes. No. It nothing. was just meat and bread. Meat and bread, and you had to ask for condiment pickles. packets. So pickles and onions and tomatoes. I don't and even think they had. Bullshit. Well, I mean, was it even an option? If you're well, hold on. Spend... Because of COVID, I don't think you even had a a, a, a bar where you could dress well, no, it all they up. They could dress it and say, okay, here's your food. They didn't. 
say you no. say this burger comes with this, this, and this. You go through. I don't want tomatoes. Then they don't put the tomato. Oh on yeah, there. no, really, no, not the of amount that. of money you spent. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to know how much it was? Oh, here we go. One hundred and nineteen dollars for a four pack of for hamburgers. Four hamburgers for four people. Four fries, three souvenir cups, and a regular drink. A one hundred and nineteen dollars. Just meat and bread. Isn't that insane? I'm, I'm curious how much the souvenir cup was. What to make? No, ten cents. Duh, <laughs> I know. Um, but because look, uh, a they lot. Char- of- oh, they charge ten oh. bucks for the souvenir cup. Oh man, Can, is it free refills? Or no, it- no. Like six flies. Even my wife asked that. She was like, "Are there free refills on that?" I mean, and not that we even want to advocate another forty-eight ounces of, of of soda for our kids. Right. But I mean, they're all grown now. Who cares, right? But I mean, you're like, I'm paying this much for it. I want, Jack a, yeah, I want a it. double dose. I, I I want diabetes after this game. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, what the fuck? I'm not okay, anyway. Hundred nineteen dollars. Anyway, and I was like, you know what? And my and my wife, my her eyes got huge, and I was like, because we don't we don't spend money like that, right? Anyway, so I was like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not doing this. I'm not. I I, I this is part of the experience. You know what I mean? We got free tickets, free parking. I don't care. Let's just have some fun with this. And we take the shit back to the seats, and we eat our food, and nobody cared. And you know, and and we watched the game, and it was a the no hitter game. It was the Yankees and Rangers. And we were so check this. So it was boring. Oh, oh it was so boring. It was a, it was a two- yeah, but it was a no hitter. No hitter. No, yes, hit, no I, hitters are boring until the ninth inning. I get that. So guess where we leave? Top of the eighth. <laughs> really? We left in the top. No, not an idiot. I don't. That's the thing. I don't. We didn't care. We did not care at all. It could have been a perfect game, and I didn't care. So, the, so the Yankees had a no hitter. We had a no hitter. It was two to nothing against. The, the Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. Anyway, it was it was, it was fun to be there. It's fun to see the stadium. Kind of painful, you know, to eat the food, but uh, it was it was fun. Well, you figured so. That- it wasn't good. I'm just gonna one to ten. So it wasn't even as, as good as McDonald's. No, no. I would I would rather have had McDonald's. That's a crazy statement for me to say. Yeah. So oh. I, have a, I have a problem. So basically, you spent 120 bucks to go see the Rangers and eat. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you would have paid for everything, it probably would have been like six hundred bucks. Oh, good lord! I don't know so you know what my were. opinion is? Oh, the tickets would have been. Oh yeah, the tickets would have been probably towards a hundred bucks a piece. So that's four hundred bucks plus parking, another fifty bucks. Yeah, 40, so you, 40, 50, Yeah. So you would have been close to five fifty, six hundred bucks for the whole trip if you would have paid for all that. Yeah, See, who can afford that? In my opinion, I, I'm uh, a huge advocate of smuggling food in. Yes, I'm that guy. I've witnessed that. We have witnessed that. Yeah, and, and you know, not not food, alcohol. Yes. Well, that too. Well, that how do you well. how do you what, you smuggle in like eight double quarter pounders of bacon? Um, yes. Well, I mean, whatever, whatever. How it takes. do you do that? Well, I mean, a little satchel, a little band purse. You just have you have it duct taped to your body all well, over the place. I, I've got two daughters. On, it's been he several it. times. <laughs> not do, do not keister it. <laughs> Keep the record. You got it warm. a Big Mac. Nothing has balls. ever gone into my ass except a doctor's fingers a couple times. But <laughs> hopefully the Big Mac's wrapped in ce- what is it? Cellophane. It's not the big foam. Is that before it gets keister? Clamshells. <laughs> Right, oh, it's the God. McDLT. Um, the obviously, McDLT up like his I, ass. Uh, that mean any of the I sweat just kind of runs off. <laughs> sneaking in, I, the, I, th- the, I find the, the the best meals to sneak in are you can you can pre wrap like bratwurst in a bun with some mustard and ketchup on it. Like in a foil. What? Uh, what do you yeah, what yeah. are you sneaking this into? That's easy now. Back there, just hold on there. So, <laughs> so you got, got a, the the you bratwurst got a corn dog bun. up your ass. No, 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 no. <laughs> And then you've got, or you can do like a, a very hearty burrito. You get like the the half pound chicken burrito at one of the taco venues, like or Taco Bell, or Que Bueno. Que well, those things are huge. How could you like shove it up your? Yeah, where where no, exactly? Just put it, just do put you put it in your coat it? pocket. Hmm. What if it's like 105 degrees out? You say you have some shorts you know, and a tank top. Sat- get a little satchel with you, or carry get get your wife to put it in her purse. So that question. So I. But they I, check your purse. No, they don't. No, they don't. So I, I, I've I've always thought this. So if a guy walks in there with his little satchel or man purse, and they say I need to see inside, I tell them no. They'd be like, oh, they've never asked to look at my wife's purse, at a movie theater anyway. But would they do? Oh that yeah, to we again? bring in. Yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're that family that brings in. Stuff uh, uh, we we were as well. Candy, uh, candy for sure. 
Well, we'd bring, you know, my, my wife would pack in all kinds of stuff. You know, we'd make our own popcorn and bring it. I would buy the popcorn. Because we could afford it. I would buy the popcorn and the drinks, but we brought in a shitload of candy. No, we'd bring our, we'd bring, we'd, we'd bring candy. But we'd bring but we like the movie theater popcorn. the big tub of popcorn that is refillable. Yeah, we like yeah. the popcorn. So I would bring, like, uh, empty containers. So I would buy the, the big tub. And then bring I would in. pour it out into the, you know, I distribute it. And then I go get another tub. Well, yeah. And but then you. But, you, but you bought <laughs> it. But you're buying it at the movie theater and you get a free yeah, refill. But also, yes. Of course. But I wouldn't, like, my point is, by saying that is that I wouldn't buy each individual popcorn because that's a waste of freaking money. No, no, no. You, you get the big the one with the refill. refill. You get the free refill. And then no I, I would, I'm, I'm with you. I'd always smuggling candy. Always smuggling candy. Oh, for sure. We would go to CVS yeah. on the way to the movie theater. That's exactly what yep. we did. Get all the dollar candy. Yep, that's what we yep. for sure. Fill up, kids. Yeah, I don't care do. what you get. Whatever yeah. makes you happy. And our kids would be like, "Isn't that dishonest?" Shut up. <laughs> My kids no, never it's called said saving money. <laughs> yeah. My kids never said that. I got young kids. Why don't we just make hot dogs and bring them in, Dad? Oh, dude, when I worked at the movie theater, people brought in all sorts of shit. And you they, didn't give a shit? No, nah, no, nah, I never. I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, you need to take that McDonald's outside. But but I will tell you, people complain. Uh, sir, it, I'm, I'm, oh, he, that's this so is my pasta dinner. Well, they McDonald's. smell, yeah, they smell the McDonald's or they smell the pizza or whatever they brought in. They smell it and they, they're irritated because they want it. <laughs> oh, yeah, but stupid. sometimes right? you can but you they, come out, they come out that, and they want these people punished. Then what about the food that the, the, they sell in the theater? So they do sell food in the theater. Of course. Hot you know, dogs. Nachos. Actually, I've never smuggled in food into like a a pizza. Someone smuggles a pizza in. Yeah, oh. somebody brought in pizza. Man. I was like, "Damn, how'd you do that?" Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, I know how they did it. Oh, uh, share wheelchair. Do, do share. Dude, they opened up the fucking side door. Okay, see, you know, the, I could share all sorts of fun stories about the movie theater, right? So we had little. I was the head usher, right? Oh, oh yeah, mm. head bum, usher. Bum, bum, bum. So. Bum, bum. So oh, sure. we knew exactly when the movies were starting. We knew when they were letting out. We knew when the theater should be filling. We were expecting when the lines would come. You knew what time of day? Yeah, summertime, thumb winter. On the pulse of the. We the knew all that. Blood no, I'm telling you. I'm theater. telling you. We knew everything. Right? Just when you work in there for three or four years, like I did, you knew everything. And so on the wall of the concession stand, there was the alarms of the the back doors. Okay, and we check the back doors all the time. We make sure they're shut. So one time, <laughs> one time we're way before the movie starts. Okay, but it's a it's a lot of dead time. Okay, and all of a sudden the lights going off, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay, that's a little odd. It's a little it's an odd time for that to happen. Normally, when people are trying to be smart, they're doing it when it's the crush is happening. Right, the lines are out to the street in the front. It's like summertime, and all the big movies are going, and the concession stands needing to be refilled. And you have no time to pay attention to it, and you, you can't even pay attention to it. But this was deader than dead. Okay, it's going off, and I walk over there, and I and I walk into the theater, and there's like I shit you not, probably twelve teenagers that have walked through the back door, and they're all walking up the aisle. They're all walking up the aisle, and they all like see me, and their eyes get big. And I was like, I just kind of staring at them, and I was like, all of you just turn around and go right back out that door. And they're like, oh man! And they all turn around. I'm not kidding. Twelve of them. I'm like, dude, try to be discreet, right? So they like, could have taken you. No hell no. I was working out back then. Getting nunchucks. Oh, I was doing lots of push-ups. <laughs> You know what's funny, though? I mean, they were just like, oh, they were had, right? And they just walked right. right out the door. But, man, I could share so many stories of the crazy shit that goes on in movie theaters. Any nudity? Uh, well, there, yeah, I mean, we caught, yeah, we caught one couple in the back of the movie theater, you know, doing their thing. So you've I mean, never they were having You've sex. never done that? Have I ever done that? No. Oh, so how far have you ever gone in a movie theater with a, with a, you know, a date? With a date? Uh, just the penis and the popcorn. Oh. <laughs> you, you've never got your puppy wet? <laughs> wow! Yeah, what the hell? Too. No, no, no. You know the one. You know the one person I made out with at the back of the movie theater. Name was John. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so she wasn't my wife yet, but my wife. Get out of here. She worked at the movie theater. That's where we met. Was really? she selling the pop? She was. She was in charge of the corn dogs. 
She was uh, she was the head concession lady. Paul, would you like another hot dog? And I was the head usher. Would you like me to and dip that into oh, the cornmeal? You're going to love this. I can't believe you guys have never heard the story. So I left for the summer to go to A&M, right? And when the college kids come back, they get there like the shit because they get all the, the, the great shifts. They the the return students, and so the people that have been there all summer, uh, all summer long, or all year long, all school year long, they get irritated that the big time college guys are coming back, right? So this is me. I come strolling into town. I'm the head usher. I get all the shifts, and here's Shelly, my wife, is the head concession. Mm-hmm. The head concession is the one. No, the head usher is the one that lets the concession crew know if they can go home. Based on my inspection. Right. So I'm walking around. I'm checking this. I'm checking that. And she's just like rolling her eyes. And I open up the little lid to the the popper. And if you're an asshole, you take a napkin and you wipe it. And if there's anything on the napkin at all, (laughs) any sort of grease or anything, you're like, do it again. And I did. (laughs) I did. And I wiped that one. I was like, not going to work. I wiped that one. I said, not going to work. And I was like, you guys need to clean this again. And, and she, oh shit, she was glaring at me because she's the head concession. She's the one that says it's ready for inspection. And it was not. Fail. Oh, total fail. Then you made anyway, out with her. Uh, well, later, yeah. <laughs> you you later. asserted your dominance, Much and she later. was like, oh, he's so later. Oh, dreamy. During that summer, she thought, like, oh, what the hell? What a who, tool. Yeah, what a tool. Who was this guy? And meanwhile, I was like, whoa, she's beautiful. I was enamored with this girl. Totally enamored with this girl. And, uh, yeah, so then I left for the fall. I came back for Christmas, and that's when we started uh, yeah, started dating at the movie theater. And she, yeah, she was, we were in the back of Star Trek. And you know how you wear a very flimsy, you wear very flimsy uh, uh, polyester uh, uniforms with a little cheesy bow tie and oh, stuff? Yeah. yeah, we were, we were kind of making out in the back of the theater, and I couldn't come out for a while. I had to stay in there for a while. What are you saying? You were charged? I was, I was wearing very flimsy polyester pants. He pitched a polyester tent. I, was, wow. I, I had a polyester tent from hell. <laughs> I couldn't leave the theater for a while. I was like, what are you doing? A little pup tent? Yeah. She, <clears throat> with a zipper? She, she, was, she was crazy. <laughs> She's a crazy girl. Anyway. Wow. Hold on. Fun, fun times back then. I, I don't mean, really want to know. I but... mean, shit. We were, what, 19? Oh. Yeah. I was 20. She was 19. Good Lord. It's a long time ago. That was 30 years ago. Unbelievable. Yeah. Good stuff, man. So, uh, anyway, working at the theater was hell, hella fun. Hella fun. Never worked at the theater. Yeah, that was good stuff. Spent a lot of time at the theater, seeing lots of movies, but I never worked there. Yeah. You know what I like doing as a kid going to the movies theater? Okay, I'm ready. I would go to the post exchange, which is kind of like a Walmart. Okay. And some some military bases call them base exchanges. This okay. was a post exchange. Yeah, it's like the grocery store, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well the it, that's called the commissary. The, commissary. the exchange yeah. is more like a Walmart because they have electronics. They've got uh, uh, candy. They've got um, clothes, yeah. underwear, shoes, it's like a department suits. Store. Yeah, nice. So it's it's a post exchange. So they uh, really. Yeah, I just farted. God. Yeah. Oh, really? We didn't know. We felt it. It rumbled the podcast. It hit the Richter scale. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Just forgot what I was talking about. Talking about movies. Good lord! The the the, the commissary, extended the commissary with the with the the clothes and the. This is my fear when we're doing podcasts, is because I, I lose my. That you black out. No, I I just lose what I'm, what I'm saying. Sixty nine percent bourbon is what does it. That's that probably might do what it. it would. No, it was the commissary where you said they had. We, we went to the. Post exchange, but yes. I don't remember what the fuck we were, what the in, in game was. What were you talking about? How Sh- fun it was working at the movie theater, pitching a tent, and I pitched a tent. And you said, "Oh, movie, yeah, wow, exchange it's gone now." Good lord, wow, producer, you did, you blacked out. So anyway, Time stamp that. We, he did it without even closing his eyes. He blacked out. I know. No, I mean, sometimes when I'm I'm, I'm talking and you guys. We don't interrupt. Do that. Oh, it's our fault. Huh? We just comment. I, I'm not saying. We're I, asking I questions. Sometimes. Yeah, we're interested in your story. Yes. Tell you what, we'll stop asking. 
No, I just I said sometimes. We just fall asleep while you're telling when stories. When we're we're doing that, it, I kind of lose it. No. <laughs> so wow. so Sean, why don't you talk about the uh, the bourbon? Actually, it's not a bourbon, is it? It's not a bourbon. No, this is a this is a a true blue cast strength. It's a single barrel straight corn whiskey. So this one is a fifty six point nine percent. What's the mash bill? Uh, corn. Wait, one hundred percent. I I know it sounds ignorant to ask this. It literally is a hundred percent corn. Correct. Uh, that, I mean that. Are you sure? Meaning, okay. Sometimes, right? So what? What is the typical mash bill? Is corn fifty one? It has to be fifty one. Typically, you're up in the seventies. No, no, no. no. But 80s. a typical mash bill is corn and rye and rye or or wheat, wheat and then barley and barley. barley. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they say 100% corn, it doesn't have wheat or rye. It's just barley and corn. Then it wouldn't be 100% corn. Well, but it might be. Barley might be something that has to be there. I, I, that's what I'm asking. Is barley the name of some dude? Barley needs to be there? He has to be there. Oh. He has to be there or the fermentation doesn't happen. No, it's not <laughs> stew barley. Um I don't know. I, I, I know that's no, a I stupid sounding question. I, I just want to make sure we're not making an assumption here I think that it's 100% literally corn. 100% corn. It's just corn. Just corn. There's nothing else in there other than the excretions from the inside of the charred barrel. Correct. Alligator. Alligator char. So, yeah. So, anyway, who's going to comment on it? Uh, I thought Sean was. Um, so, it's called True Blue. So, you never looked up the mash bill, Mr. Producer. Well, the he doesn't mash, know what it's called. That's the mash bill is uh, well, well it's, it's called it a, a Balcones True Blue. Balcones. Bal. Bal, not black. B A L. Balcones. Cone. Perfect. True. True Blue. That's it. True Blue. Okay, that's not the label though. Well, it's the same. This is just cast, cast strength, strength, right? Okay, I got you. I got you. Cast strength. Correct. That explains why it. Oh, you look at the very top. See how they have those Gl- Glencairn glasses? Nice. Well, that nice. is nice. That's exactly what we drink out of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I see. That doesn't say balcones. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it says balcones. Oh, it says balcones. Balcones. It doesn't do that no. either. The bal- yes. Okay, so what says... do we got here? A true blue 100 is made from the uh, same select barrel of our blue corn whiskey. That have always gone into our true blue cast strength, diluted down to 100 proof. So it's been dumbed down. This is not that, though. Well, this is a store pick. So I don't know if it's, it's special for Total Wand or not. Ah, it's good. And it's got a, it's got a slight, almost, it's, it's almost got a slight. Um, Corn flavor? <laughs> it, it's, got a, it's got a burn. This it's is it's got a burn, but it's 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 warming. It's a warming burn. I don't know how to describe that any other. Is it uh, easier than the previous? Oh, good lord, yes. So I again, I am not convinced that it's truly a hundred percent corn, nothing else. But I don't know. Uh, maybe it is. I think it is. But you know, well, you might be right because there are there are corn whiskeys. Well, and there's rice. You know, there's rice. That's uh. That's vodka. Sake. Uh, the sake, yeah. Sake. 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 Yeah, it's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the sake stuff is, is 100% rice. Let's go do sake bombs. So, I mean, you can ferment. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert on fermentation, but can you ferment anything? I mean, what? Uh, yeah, any kind of food. Any sort right. of decomposing. Fruit. Barley, nuts, grains. But don't you have to add something to make it ferment? You can't just take there's anything a, and there's make There's a yeast in there, right? Right. So, I mean, we really need to become experts on how fermentation works. Uh, because so this, that's a big part of, well, of, I, I, I of made, understanding how this works. Well, I made beer. Okay, so it, yeah. So I, help, I, sure. I, I, had, I had the, you know, you buy little kits, right? So right. you had the mash. I mean, you could start and make the mash yourself. So I had the mash. And you add the water to it, and then you put it in this big ass barrel, and then you add yeast to it. And can you click on that? It says how to ferment everything, and it says in several simple steps you can f- preserve anything in your home garden. Yeah. All right. So you're right. So you can. All right. So be creative. Whatever. Pick a vessel. Okay. Think bite size. Okay. Start out small. In other words, 
Respect the brine. What does that mean? Scroll down a little bit. Brine is salt water. Okay. So you have to... That's not fermenting, though. Well, that's what the, this article is supposed to be about, that's how to pickling. ferment stuff. Pickling. Oh, pickling. Come on. We can't... That's such a weird word, pickling. Pickling. This is, this is not uh, fermenting. This is pickling. But the, the article... Scroll to the top. Doesn't it say seven ways to ferment? How to ferment everything. Unless they do something past pickling. So let's keep going. Submerge, cover Submerge, up. Submerge, cover up, co- keep cool. All right. That's it? Allow produce to ferment <laughs> on the countertop for at least seven days. All right. Well, hold on. Move so to a dark, cool place. I have here the the Balcones True Blue Cask Strength Barrel. This is the actual bottle that we're drinking. Okay. So all of the other ones had like a, a piece of corn stalk as the backdrop in, in between. Yes. You know, there's only one that has a hammer. And this one has the hammer on it, and okay. this one is it says Texas True Blue Single Barrel is a modern pot distilled ode to the tradition of the classic American style of corn whiskey. It is made entirely from Texas grown and roasted blue corn and aged exclusively in refill casks. From there grain go. There we go. to glass, this is Tesky, or this is Texas whiskey at its finest. Well, there Good. we go. That answers that question. Right. The taste or is born from one hundred percent mash of blue. Well, corn. that's that's not it. Well, that well, I mean, yeah, that, but it's the same premise. Uh, it's what you just read. But the, see how it's got the the corn stock. Boy, this one had the hammer. Okay, but the ours point is, is stronger. No, that's stronger. That's sixty four point five. Oh, we have a, the wimpy one. Yes. Yeah, so oh, we have fifty six point nine. Ah, dang it, uh, we have the wimpy one. Really, Sean? <laughs> Come on. So you bought the pussy, the now, pussy bottle. Well, that well, this brings up a good point. So I mean, why is that stronger? Is that because it's straight corn? Well, this is straight corn. <laughs> this has a hammer on it. Yeah, this one has yeah. a hammer. It should be. It and should then, be stronger. What, what, is a, what does ABV at sixty percent mean? Alcohol blood by, by volume. Alcohol by volume is sixty percent. So there, that's fifty nine point something. Well, this They're is probably, also cast So strength. that's one twenty proof. It's a cask, so each cask is a little bit different. So it's rich pecan, rich pecan, apricot, maple. Uh, okay, except that's not what we're drinking. That is different. What you're reading, or no? No, no. I'm different. not reading that. I'm reading this one. It's good, and I just finished it. Really? Jeez. Yeah. Are how you about fucking that, kidding me? Okay, <laughs> you got. You know what? I'm getting tired. What are you, Joe Pesky over there? You getting yeah, all claimed up? Yeah. Let me tell you something. No, no, that's not, that's not dude. Like that. Seriously, what? What's wrong with me? I was thirsty. That, you got a it, bottled water. It doesn't quench your a thirst. A can of beer and a bottle of Rebel to <laughs> yell in front of you. I have a problem. Which will be like water. What do you want at this me to point. say? And, and, I and, have a problem. And you, you're ready to go. You Don't got, judge me. You got a bottle opener Come ready on, to go, M-F-er. just in case one of us whips out a bottle. Don't judge me, MFR. I am. I have a problem. Okay, I get it. No, I don't think you have a problem. Yeah, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna see your asses Jeff, up at you the have FAC. A bug on your left forehead. Am I gonna am I gonna see you it's up at the now. FAC at five AM? No. Oh, Probably no. the CPS. Will no. We, will we see you at five thirty? I will be PM? there from five to seven. Look PM. down look through the windows. PM. You will see them you will see me balling. At yeah. PM, you keep waking PM. up that early. It's gonna kill you. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Maybe not. They say most successful people get up early like that. Gives you a hunchback. I'm not successful at all. I just get up and play basketball. Well, maybe that's Otherwise, what makes you successful. Fat. I don't know. You know what I do? I come home and I shower as fast as I possibly can because I have to take a nap. I'm a huge proponent <laughs> for taking naps. <laughs> I do. I get home and I have a meeting at 8 every day at 8, 8 a.m. My wife. And I try to get home as quick as I can. And shower as quick as I can because I need that like thirty minute nap. I think we talked about this like three weeks in a row. Yeah, my Did wife we, thinks oh, I'm really. Am I getting? Yes. I'm my getting wife old thinks I'm less old. of a man because I take naps. Well, that's, that's, that's not masculine to take a nap. That's just like, sure it is. It's resting your brain. I'm like, resting you know, your brain is imp- important. I could take like a thirty minute nap and I'm on fire for the rest of the day. Makes sense to me. What is wrong with you? I think we've talked about this for three weeks in a row. We have. Well, you have to be all like all judgmental and shit about it. Because you guys love your naps. You like to talk about them. Okay, so you don't take naps. What do you do? I work. Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. I build flags. Uh, what, what are you saying? Like when you I do things during, during in, his in, off hold time. On, in between meetings, you go and and do woodworking. Sometimes. Yeah, but he goes to bed at ten. Who does? Jeff. Well, so do I. What's your point about that? I I go to bed like at one. That's not that is because you healthy. wake up like at ten. That's when you get started. Yeah, that's, well, that's not true. That's, that's a different problem. Dude, I am up at seven seven thirty. But then Every you day. nap throughout the day. So? That's I take a couple you, naps. That's why you stay up so late. Well, you stay up till 1 a.m. and get up at 7. Um, the alarm goes off at 7. That's sometimes, why you need a nap. Sometimes so I get, up, get up, sometimes I don't. Most of the time, I, I'm up and ready to go uh, by 8.30. What are you doing till 1 a.m.? And don't say work, because I'm not going to believe you. Well, there you are. Every single time. I usually the goal is to get look I I don't mind see this is where you, you guys get disconnected from work at 5 I mean you're the fucking Fred Flintstone sliding down the dinosaur right? I am, yippee you ha I am, motherfuckers I am a, I'm 100% that I don't way. give a shit I take a nap you know cuz my, my you know my my wife goes to bed that's it I'm there I'm like I might as well work I don't mind Working three to four hours a night. It doesn't bother me. So you literally work. You work. Yeah, consistently my... work until 1 a.m. Well, not consistently, but sometimes I work until 2.30. Sometimes I work until midnight. No, but my point is you're working. You're not gaming. No, you're not. You would be. I, I like to game uh, in the morning. Like from 7 to 9? Um, what from like, say? From like 8.30 to 9.30. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So I when have do, my. When do you game, Jeff? I have my. I don't. I have my cup of coffee. <laughs> Never. Really? I have my cup of coffee. I'll, I'll pull up YouTube and I'll find up some news uh, articles coming on. Uh, Austin will come down, get ready for school. That's all done now. But Tara now goes to work, and right when she goes to work, I usually turn the Xbox on because my I like to get the coffee maker going for her. You know, get it all warmed up and. And get her little coffee pot in there That's and nice ready for her. And then I, I drink my coffee and I sit there, I watch the news for a little bit. And then when she goes to work, I pop in a game and I usually play one or two games. It gets my mental fog kind of lifted a little bit. I can mm. I can judge my eye to hand coordinate coordination to to figure out how well I'm gonna do during the day. <laughs> uh, it's not gonna be a very good day, you know. <laughs> and if it's not working, you play another hour? No. <laughs> no, and <laughs> It, I, it's something I enjoy doing. Yeah, so, that's, and that's, then I, that, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I schedule all my uh, for my work. I, I make sure that what I do, uh, I accommodate what I do because it's what I do, right? And you know, and I do my reports to like two thirty, three, four thirty, or sometimes Jeff and I go to the gym at five, and I come back and, you know, I eat dinner, or whatever, and when everyone goes to bed or subsides, it creeps into the cracks wherever they go the kids go uh at 8 30 9 o'clock i go back in the office and i work from for for three to you know two to four hours something like that hmm. i don't have a problem with it i don't okay i don't i don't it's it's easy for me and i get a lot done in that crunch at, yeah, it's at quiet night. quiet at night time well, i, I get what, a lot done you know my days are consumed with meetings mine too and i don't i don't have that, that in that hour you don't God. have meetings you can actually get work done. So, so, do you work at night? No, not if I have to. I mean, if I have to, yeah, I, yeah, I don't I'll get either. Up. And you know, honestly, I should be because I have meetings all day long and I don't do any work. Right. Well, what kind and of I work tried, do you do? I tried to work. I'll answer that in one second. I tried to work during those meetings, like multitask. Oh yeah, they, I can't. They, I can't do it. And then they call on you. Well, I mean, not only do they call on you, but I, I, the, I, the meeting is ending, and I haven't listened the whole time, and then I'm disconnected, and I ask other people, well, what, where did we end up? I mean, so I realized it. I, there, I can't keep multitasking. It doesn't work. So I'm like, I have to pay attention to my meetings. So at the end of the day, all the meetings are over. I'm mentally exhausted from the meetings. I don't know if that's an age thing. I don't know what that is, right? But I'm like, well, shit, I didn't, I don't get anything done. I just was in meetings. So really what should happen is I should take a, like, what kind of what you're talking about. I should take a two-hour break, eat dinner with the family, do my thing, and instead of falling onto the couch and watching Netflix or, or Amazon Prime, I should, get, I should get another two hours of work in and do work work. 
But I'm not doing it. You know why? Because I don't, I don't want to. Because well, if I did that, you know, I would get burned out, and I don't know how you don't, Sean. But here's the thing: I would get because I take out. the naps. Well, I take the naps. I get Look, it. I got back. I I drove out to where the fuck did I go? I, I went somewhere today. Uh, yeah. Somewhere east, past Greenville. Now it's gonna fucking fuck with me. But east, whatever. Wiley. Lone Oak. <laughs> Whatever. It was about an hour and a half. Did you say Lone Oak? Yeah, he did. Yes. What the hell is that? That is east of Greenville. Wow. I want to keep saying Clemson, but it's not that. There's a That's Texas a- South Carolina. I There's believe. a Texas A and M there. That's Commerce. Yeah, thank you, Commerce. Really? So, That's out east. I didn't know that. Yes, it's out there. I think it's either north or south of Greenville. It's really close to Greenville. So, which is not that far out of the Metroplex. Greenville's no, not that far out. It's, a, it's a little over an hour. It's an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, Greenville's just uh, east of Wiley. Yeah. So, right? No. No, I don't know. No. Wiley's no. just, just stop, east stop, of, stop, of, stop. of So Allen. there's there's 380. No, 380 goes east and west. So uh, 380 is also about 45 minutes north of downtown Dallas. So 380 runs east-west, and I was heading towards Greenville from the center mark. was you know, from my house, it's about an hour, fifteen, hour, right. thirty okay. minutes, whatever. Okay. So my my point is, is you know, I do inspections, I come back, and I usually take a nap. I mean, driving is a puts a wear and tear on it you. It does. Man. You know, so I get back, I gotta take a tear, a, a, a little nap, a little fifteen minute banger. Right. Uh, I think this one I got back at four. Uh, uh, there's a carpenter at my house. He's doing some work. Uh, he was about to. He was pulling out when I was pulling in, so he stopped to pull back in, and we chatted about his. His work for the day, and yeah. I, I paid him out, and whatever. And I took a nap. I took a nap for about an hour. Right. And uh, when I woke up, as when I was getting your e- your text messages coming in for uh, all the the latest and greatest. Um. And um. You know, we're going back and forth with a little, couple text messages, but yeah, that's my thing. You know. I, I don't. They say that naps are very healthy. So if you take now, a they're nap, supposed to be like. Power naps, right? Like 15, 20, 30 minutes. They can does be. Does Fauci say that? Fauci is, they call him the nap doctor. <laughs> he is the authority on naps. Oh, dude. Let's, let, can we talk about him for a second? The no, fraud that he is. He's. Is he getting called out now? He's he is getting, getting called out. Yeah, because he was the one that said there was no way this could be uh, released from a lab or, you know, and, and then now he's like, you know, it looks like the evidence is leading towards uh, that it was. Uh, Accidentally released from a lab. I mean, a lab that I was giving money yeah, to. Yeah, that he was giving money to. A dude. I, and he, he said uh, when 2017 that Trump will have to deal with a pandemic. Yeah, you he said, said that, that. You said that the last three podcasts. I roll. No, <laughs> it was the four, four time. <laughs> okay. But no, the fact I, of the matter is, I, he did say, it. why I'm, is he not yeah. held accountable? Why isn't the media. Exploding on him as the oh, they're all in the tank for him, man. I mean, it's it's crazy. They have dolls of Fauci. They do the Fauci doll. Is he a beanie baby? <laughs> you know, he looks like Ken doll. What? He's like a Ken doll. He's a gonna Ken win the, doll, the Nobel Ken, Peace Prize. A Ken doll. Yes. He he is more likely to win the Nobel Peace Prize than Trump is when unprecedented Arab countries have hammered out normalized relations with Israel. Three different countries. Yep. I don't three. get it. And and those three different countries stood by, I mean, I, I don't know if they stood by Israel during the crazy, the last couple of weeks. The Hamas thing. Yeah. But but they didn't, they didn't like rescind their diplomatic relations. You know what I mean? They easily could have been like, ah, we made a huge mistake. Israel was, you know, shitting all over Palestinians, right. and we they could have bailed on them, and they didn't. I'm I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, we live in a very dishonest world right now. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the press. We've talked about this before, probably three times at least. Oh, at every every podcast <laughs> about the, the dishonesty of the media. The the when did it when did it turn? Maybe it's always been this way, and maybe maybe it's, maybe it's just more obvious now now that there's a counterpoint because back in the day you had abc cbs and nbc and that was it yeah and you didn't have all the talk radio you didn't have the internet you didn't have all these other you outlets. didn't have a lot of dissenting opinion yeah you didn't have all the other outlets to right. well they had out opinions. Their, their hypocrisy yeah Th- they had opinions and everyone had one but they weren't 
the broadcaster companies weren't owned by one conglom- conglomeration. You know where you have are they backed by the Chinese? Do you know? Man, in my really, I mean, who knows? I, I bet you they are. I, I bet that the China China owns most of the broadcasting uh, programs out there. Period. Because including Fox, cause something because something doesn't make sense. No, you know it's it's weird when you have um, ABC. Let me just with the catch word like the big lie. Right. We'll, we'll use that one of a, a million. Or the big lie. Insurrection. You know, just <sighs> you know, it, 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 what is the one where they were coming? The 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 caravans were manufactured crisis. Where right. you get all these key words and, and, and terminologies that are introduced, and all of them are synonymously uh, being they're they're talking about this. It's it's propaganda. Yeah. I mean, prop. Anytime you see propaganda like that, look, who is the master at propaganda? China. China. The master. The power of suggestion. I know it's human nature. Crazy, but yeah, yeah, but I mean, propaganda can only get you so far. The rest of it is uh, uh, propaganda. You're, you're beholden, got Joe Biden. You're beholden to them. Propaganda money, got like Joe money. Biden elected. Yeah, you'll get you'll get your you'll get your money cut off if you don't toe the line on the propaganda. That's what I think is happening. Not unless uh, Donald Trump is in office. Well, okay, but I'm what I'm saying is I think a lot of these mainstream media play uh, uh, are, are 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 need the money, and if they don't do this and this and that. They lose the money. From who? Money from who? China? China. Oh. Yes. Yes. I, that's, what I, I, that's the only thing I can... Because you, I... you think CNN's viewership is down significantly. Huge. How are they making money? Right. They're staying afloat because of China. Um, you know, I also... That would, that, that would be also what I would argue. Question whether... How solid are the CNN... How, how solid are ratings? What do you mean? Well, I mean, how solid uh, if 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 uh, how solid are the like ratings? Like the Nielsen ratings? Yeah, how solid is that? I mean, there it's a microcosm of. Well, they use stats and statistics, right? So they yeah, say of, of, we're going to poll. They said say because at Nielsen they'll send out. I've gotten them. The 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 questionnaire, uh, certain date. Would you watch? I've gotten those. I've filled them out and sent them back. But they also have these set top boxes. I've they never have. sent one. I've never. Have you ever gotten one? No, never. I've gotten them. Um, what to to be invited to be a Nielsen Raider? No, it's or like whatever. A, it's like a big forum. It says you know we like to. This is for ratings, and we like to understand what you watched <laughs> on this date. A Nielsen Ra- Raider. Yeah. Yeah. No, there, there are people I'm a that Raider. Do that. <laughs> there are. No. <laughs> and I think they I send guess. out. At least they used to. I haven't got one in years, but right. uh, they used to send these out. But I think also think they have set up boxes for so many people, right? Yes. So they say yes, they do. We have a hundred thousand boxes out there, and they track exactly and what they, they watch. Say, you know, we can extrapolate out over three hundred million people what the viewership is. That's right? correct. So, so it, it's not exact science, of course. It, I, but, I think but twenty-seven percent of but, people but, watched it. But here's kind of a thing. but here's the thing, Sean. Their ratings are so low that if they if they were manipulated, there's no way they would even let those get that low. Right. Does that make sense? Their ratings are so low in CNN that that it looks so bad. It's so obviously bad, and it's so obviously a problem that if it were rigged and if they were not correct or whatever, they would. There was no way they would let that happen because it doesn't look good. What are their ratings? Bad. It's bad. Yeah, but it's like so Don diluted. Lem- like Don Lemon or like Stelter, he's he's like under seven eight hundred thousand people on his show. Right, that's shocking. Yeah, extrapolated out to the entire country, that is shocking. Yeah. So I wonder what the who, how many people are following Joe Rogan? So Joe Rogan's Millions. getting more yes. Uh, yes viewers than Don Lemon. Well, yes. and see, in that they can can't they can actually. There's IP accurate. addresses that they yeah they, it's they pretty they accurate right. track yeah they know ex- they well, know exactly how many people what like you'll you'll see uh, like on all the videos how many times it's been viewed how many right. followers do they have right how many people follow Joe Rogan's uh, podcast and they don't get that over the internet no. I mean uh, over uh, over the air but you know another thing is um, the uh, CNN lost their contract with the uh, airports because when you used to go to an airport. Oh yeah, it, it was, was always CNN, CNN. CNN everywhere. Who is it now? I don't know, but CNN lost their contract. So oh, that was shit. 
That That's was huge. Yeah, that would happen recently. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, it was a different broadcast because it was a specific broadcast. It was the same news stories. Yeah. Right. Wow. And uh, so they lost that contract. And uh, is it Fox News in the airports now? I don't know who. It I is. don't know. Um, no, it's it's the uh, you'll need to look to see uh, what news organization or news channel is in airports. Uh, it used to be CNN for years and years. And I years. remember when it was headline news, and it was that it was that girl that we talked about, Robin Mead. It was Robin Mead, right? And when you were at the airport, and she she was super cute, right? And she was oh, bubbly. Man. Headline news. Yeah, we talked about we talked about her, right? C- click on that one. Great news for travelers: CNN will no longer be broadcast. Oh, they're pulling it from the airport. Yeah, well, the CNN airport network uh, shut down after thirty years. Yeah, it's been a long, long time. I don't know when they're let. Last day is the unfriendly a... skies controls content in America's biggest airports. They're pulling the plug. So who's who's pulling the plug? They 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 decided to pull out of airports. So they have Reach TV to take over CNN airport screens. So I don't know if it was a self inflicted wound or the we're not going to get our contract thing, so we're going to get ahead of it and say, yeah, we're just not going to stop, we're oh, gonna stop yeah. doing no, it. Oh, yeah, no, I could totally see them doing the spin right. before they get canned. Right. All right, but this totally. was... Totally, uh, 100%. So on uh, March 25th, 2021, which is... A month ago, two months ago. Yeah. So Reach TV is moving to provide content for, the, uh, for those more than 1,800 screens and said more than 15 U.S. airports have already agreed to terms, adding that other airports that have contracts. Uh, the announcement comes as air traffic begins to pick up the, uh, vacation, uh, the vaccinations increasing and public uh, confidence in the travel returning. So regardless, this is a, it's called Reach TV, the airport experience news. Reach TV. Reach TV to take over CNN airport screens. Reach, as in real China TV. <laughs> yeah, but, but I like, I like reach, where you're going with that. Uh, you know, real China TV. Fuck it. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I don't understand what's going on? So after this Israel-Palestinian conflict, right, that just wrapped up in a ceasefire, mm-hmm. I did not understand the, f- the, the wave of of anti-Israel hate. It flooded. In the United States. In even. the United in the States. US. Help me understand this, guys. What what is the why 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 do a lot of people, not just in the United States, but in the world, what do they have against Jews? Well, help me understand this. I've never understood the hatred I, of I Jews. I don't get it either, man. I don't understand either. You know, it's uh <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was clearly in Europe, right? It was clearly in I, in in pre you know it's in pre World War II uh, Germany. It's got right? something to do yeah, with something about Jews. I, what is it? It's how it's the knowledge that comes behind the Jews. You know, they have this. They this, resent them because of the old Bible, it, because of the Old Testament. I think that that Old Testament bumps the chosen, heads. The chosen. The People. bumps head with their religion. I mean, think about it. You've got the religious books that are respected on the planet. Of the two, those are the earliest ones. You okay. Know, you know, I'm just thinking that yeah, how does Judea. That explain, how does that explain Hitler wanting to kill them all? Well, that was a coincidence. I think he was just trying to develop the uh, Aryan race. And he was trying to purge uh, He was trying to purge all the impurities out there. And it just happened to be a shitload of Jews in, in Germany. No, they were singled out. They, well, they were. But no, to, to his point, they, they owned everything. They were, they're, they're very business smart. They're very, they work hard. And they managed to, kind of like how we, we were complaining about the Chinese owning, owning land and well, owning property and owning real estate. That's the way it was in Germany. They owned everything. They were the bankers. They they have the money. They own the real estate. They were because the George they're, Soros. They are of they, the, they of are the a area. successful a successful uh, group of people, right? And and so you know Hitler was like you know they shouldn't own our country. They're not even from our country. They're not the Aryan race. And so we we need to purge them and and give our country back to well, they, the, 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 stole, the rightful owners. Well, he stole all of their belongings. Of and course, you, and you hear yeah, about he, that now, right? Oh yeah, he he forced them out of their their houses and homes and condos and apartments and land and. Did they have condos back in? Uh, I was thinking the same thing. 
But they, their, their property they, and their belongings, everything. You know, it's amazing of uh, of the treasures and, and their duplexes that uh, are that people still haven't found. Timeshare. <laughs> they're Airbnbs. You know, that are, that are buried in in basements in uh, all over Europe. Hold European. on, what's buried in basements? Uh, the belongings that the, oh, yeah. the Nazis took from the from the Jews. I'm reading you know, know, priceless, I'm, I'm reading priceless a, artifacts. I'm reading a book now that uh, it, it's talking about uh, these trains. That uh, had like cars and cars and cars of gold and paintings, shit. And, and they were Art buried. Work. Adolf Hitler in was a genius uh, he, by using trains, the trains of Europe to move shit. You know, instead of having a a uh, a line of vehicles, right? You know, they put everything on trains. It was genius because it was in the it was in the winter. And it's so hard on the road to travel. She, he put everything on trains, and, and he would go to village to village to village, rape everything, right, and put it on the train and send it back. Well, and Trump, they they would melt it down and whatever. And disgustingly, that's how he moved people. Yeah, yeah, you're true. It is. Yeah, they he put the belongings cars. on one train and the the Jews on the other. Yep. It's just, you know, that's crazy. Yeah, dark topic. I don't know how we got on that, but. Um, why, how did we get but on that? It oh, does... because I did. I don't understand today. Today in America, what is the anti-Israel sentiment? It's it's tribal. I don't get it. It's I think simply it's, tribal. I think it's political, and the press and BLM, and they get press. That I, I think I think that's but what it you is. You have you have current congressman uh, Elon Omar that outright. Is slamming Jews. Well, AOC you've, is doing the same thing. You've it's got that whole the squad, but you got and the it's ignorance of AOC. It's it, AOC. A lot of water. She she comes from that, that's the way she was brought up and stuff. AOC is just ignorant. She's from Sudan, Somalia, Somalia. I think she's from Somalia. I think she's from Somalia, so there, which is a Muslim pictures. country. Yeah, yeah, and there are pictures and of Muslims her hate hate Israel. Yeah, and there, there are pictures of her. So there's a religious, there's a religious reason. There's the, uh, there's the, and so who's it? Talib, Talib, the one that goes, yeah, with the one with the man hands, Rashida. yeah, the one that's like, we're gonna get that mother effer yeah. out of office, correct? Oh, Rashida. time to impeach so, that motherfucker, what a, what a, quote yeah, unquote. Yeah, what a class act. Anyway, she is. She got reelected, by the way. Well, she, uh, yeah, by ninety something percent, right? I don't get it. What does that tell I don't you? Get it. Those anyway, so morons. she is. Part, was that in Dearborn? She's part. It was in Michigan. She's part Palestinian, right. so she, I get I get why she hates Israel, right? Yeah, but but still, this isn't a Palestinian thing. This is a Hamas thing. Well, but they don't separate it, right? In their in their in their mind, well, the, no, the Palestinian issue happened even before Hamas took over. It got worse. It got militant and radical when Hamas took over. But before that, they would still had issues yeah, because for guys, a thousand, a thousand years, they've been fighting over the same land. I mean, in other words, if like when you when you're dealing with your kids, if you can't figure out how to solve this problem, if you're fighting over this soccer ball, if you can't solve how I to play with, soccer ball. I'm taking the soccer ball away. That that's kind of what you're thinking. Um, Let's so just take the land away. Well, who's yeah, gonna do but that? I would, who's going to do that? But I'm it's kidding. You know? No one's going to do that. Of no, course. but I would. Luxembourg. Uh, but here's here's the thing. Uh, don't put don't if put you Sean could, in, in charge of the UN. If you could do something like if you would take like a planet sized bulldozer and be like, you know what, you know what, I'm I'm dividing the sandbox up a little bit differently because you two. You two have fucked everything up. Right. You, can't, you have see, fucked everything up. You can't up. get along. Yeah. So you know what? Guess what we're doing? This is the new line, and you nothing's get this, the same you anymore. You get that. Yeah. And, 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 and just wipe it clean. But it doesn't work that I'm way. I'm not talking about... Israel is a sovereign country. I'm not talking about land as is. I'm talking about... You country. would upset the entire world because there are there is holy land there and holy sites. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, and do I don't really it. mean that. It's just... I know. It's just because a shame. If you're running for the head of the UN, I'm not voting for you. Ah, uh, Nikki Haley. She blew it. Can she yeah. come back from that? Well, I don't know, man. We've already talked about this. No, she cannot. Three times. Three, no, four times. <laughs> Who's the other one? Heather. Um... Yeah, we talked. We talked about that too. Yeah. We talked about this exact <laughs> same topic. Whenever we say topic. Nikki Haley, he's like, "Oh, I, that blonde." I know. <laughs> and then we never know who it is. And then we finally look it up. And then we're like, "Oh yeah, okay." Anyway, who was Dua Lipa? Dua Lipa. Who is that? Uh-huh. Dua Lipa. She's a singer. 
And Why she, she, oh, she, singer Dua Lipa. Who, who cares what she thinks, though? No one. That's what I'm saying. Well, no she's one being cares cri- about well, these people. Well, she's being criticized by somebody. Well, she had an ugly campaign who against... Who gives a shit what she says? Uh, Dula Lipa. Pro-Palestinian stance. That's such a weird... Singer, the singer, Dula Lipa. Okay. Uh, hey, okay. Where's she from? Let's dig in. Hold on. So we might have talked about this last week, but let's dig into that, that conflict between Israel and Palestine. Okay? Just, just briefly. So... They are always fighting over the Holy Land, right? Uh, uh, over, uh, actually, it's, it's a little more particular than that. It's um, East Jerusalem, right? Anyway, in a, uh, bottom line is they had some local, some local riots and mobs, and then they put that riot down because it was getting them really. They were throwing Molotov cocktails and all this kind of stuff. They shot rubber bullets. A lot of people got hurt. And then Hamas started launching rockets. Mm. And they started launching rockets from Palestine. And when that happens, Israel said, yeah, we're not going to allow that. You're not going to indiscriminately fire rockets into our populated areas. Okay? And then from there, they said, we're going to do whatever it takes to make Hamas not be able to do that in the future. Well, and they were heavy-handed. And I don't blame them. And the thing about it, the difference— Imagine Canada launching rockets into the United States indiscriminately. But the difference is, is we that put it down. the uh, the Israels called up the places where they were going to bomb, and they were like, oh, "Hey, yeah. we're about to oh, they did everything we're they about could to, to minimize bomb your area. That's right, because we found rockets came from right here at these coordinates. So we're decimating these coordinates, and that's we encourage you up. guys to evacuate because they're, they're, they're coming down rockets. in two hours. They built tunnels all over Palestine." Miles and miles of, of tunnels so they can move rockets, move rockets from one place to another, from one place to another. And they're launching them from in, right in front of mosques, right in front of schools, hospitals. right at hospitals, and right there in densely populated apartment complexes. Because they, they, they're daring Israel to, to you know what, T- take this out. Take this, this rocket battery out. I dare you. And they did. Yeah. And they did. <laughs> and I don't blame them. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't. Uh, you have these are terrorists, and you and you have to beat them. You have to fight them. I mean, that's how there's. It's an interesting uh, system. I wonder how big those tunnels are. Uh, I mean, as they, far as driving vehicles, they on them? decimated those tunnels. Took them out. Well, we saw footage last week. They're not huge. Oh, I never saw footage. Yeah, we watched it. Uh, so what? Were they six foot wide, four feet, like five feet high. I mean, what are we talking well, there about? There are people walking in them. No, they're not your Saturday night dates. So they're six feet, six feet high. And probably eight feet wide, where they can move and do, and do they have uh, oh, well, rails? The, well, the do they part, have rails to move rockets? Well, the part we saw, people just were just walking through it. They weren't rails. They weren't moving rockets or anything. So maybe okay. it was something different. Well, that's I think that's how they're moving weapons. Right. Anyway, let's yeah, let's move on. So I want to talk about the um, the, uh, the 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 thing that Ron DeSantis just did down in Florida, or he's about to do. Okay, with uh, social media. And what he's doing is he he's um, what he's what he's done is if you're on Facebook or Twitter or what are the other, I don't it's probably the only two that if you say something you know like uh, for instance you know Trump got deplatformed right they got pulled off uh, there's a couple others out there that have been pulled off because you know they they go counter against whatever you know Facebook believes what right. Twitter believes. Right. Um, anything that you say about the big lie and, and stuff like that, they'll they'll yank you off. Well, what Ron DeSantis, DeSantis did is he says, well, if Facebook and Twitter do that, you now have a path to sue them. One hundred percent. I've been waiting for this to happen. They are they are absolutely denying First Amendment rights, civil civil liberties. And it's all based off of, uh, I don't agree with you, so you're not allowed to say it. They call it hate speech. They call it your, you know, just like they're, you know, they say Trump uh, stoked fires when he was tweeting, right? And that's what led to the insurrection. What Ron DeSantis said is that this session, this session, we took action to ensure that we, the people, real Floridians across the Sunshine State, are guaranteed protection against the Silicon Valley elites. 
Uh, many in our state have experienced censorship and other tyrannical behavior firsthand in Cuba and Venezuela. If big tech censors enforce rules consistently to discriminate in favor of the d- dominant Silicon Valley ideology, they will now be held accountable. I love it. That is fucking huge. It is. Did you guys finish your shot? You just did another one? Yeah, he's on his uh, second. So am I. Yeah, look at, look at the difference between ours here. Well, and look at the difference at the end of the night. <gasps> what does that mean? Just saying. Wow. What hold, a jerk. Hold on. What <laughs> just because I'm vis- visiting the pygmies doesn't mean I that didn't intend to do that. That was a kick Are you insinuating that he gets blown up more than yeah, you? Yeah, what a jerk. Well, yes. Yeah, look what you do at the end of the yeah, night. You, you don't, you get, you. <laughs> taking well, a shit on your bathroom well, floor. Well, actually, that's. That would be the opposite. You would give him less, not more. I did not pour that. Yeah, he poured that. I did not pour that. He poured this. No. He said, look what I'm going to do to you. No, well, I, I finished mine, and he pushed the bottle to me. I did. Peer pressuring me I to take more. I was peer pressuring him. And then when he poured just a tiny bit, I showed my glass to his and said, And really? hence, here we are. Hence. Hence. Hence and forthright. Hence and forthright, consequentially. So this uh, true blue, going back to it. Hitherto. It smells very caramely. Caramely. Caramelly. Caramelly. So back to the Ron DeSantis. I think if he if he stays on this path, if Trump doesn't run, I think he is going to be the leader. I if not, if if it doesn't go sideways, because the closer yeah. we get, the press is going to come out and they're going to dig shit up, or they're going to try it just like they did with Trump. And but he he's he's a little more. I hate to say this, but he's a little more dignified. DeSantis is a little more dignified. He is. I don't, so I, don't I, 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 I pray. I'm actually praying. I, I would say that more Trump, polished. That Trump polished. Whatever. He's a politician because he's a politician. Trump was not a politician. He was a 12 year old bully. We've talked about this. So I would wish Trump just step back. Be like George Soros is for the left. He may step back and just support the races that you need to support, and people still like him, and they and they know he was going. He had his the right things in mind, and but he's a, a shitty politician. Man, I, I would venture to, support- to say that there, are, even though you may be right, yeah, I, I'd venture to say that half the population wants Trump to run. I don't. I, I and I get it. I get it because it's he is the antithesis of typical Washington politician. A, poli- a politician, and, and how he, old is DeSantis? And he, I have no idea. Damn, he had things that were working. The border was working. China pressure was working. All these things were God, working. He's forty-two. The Keystone Pipeline was yeah, working. He's got time. He's got Energy time. independence was working. Everything was fucking working. I would, I would bring, uh, I'd bring Ron DeSantis in as his uh, vice president. No. And I want Trump out. And I would have Ron DeSantis take over on the second half. I want half. DeSantis to be president. Well, I disagree. Because you could have a full 12 years, because you'd have a Trump for one more, and then DeSantis, and then DeSantis. Okay, yeah, I'm in. That's what I'm thinking. I'm in on that, too. Because that could be a unique situation. Because, you know, it may have happened before where a president is in, then they're out, and then in again. But here's the thing. Well, you got Ronald Reagan Guys. and then George Bush. But here's well, the thing. that was twelve years because Bush only won the one year. Do you Clinton really, up. do you really want the divisiveness that Trump brings? Man, I think do now you really that want it again. Are yes. you saying it's, it's but his, not as he's not going to have now? the divisiveness because he's not he doesn't have Twitter, he doesn't have Facebook. Do Do you think it's less divisive now? I don't think it is. Like who? Like between who and who? With by people, Pe- people. I in think general? it's the same. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There, there was this. this the difference insane... between then and now it's is that press. we don't bust Biden's balls as much as they busted Trump's balls. Of course, because they're right. I That's get what it. it was. The divisiveness was the the shitheads in Congress going after Trump and the press going after Trump nonstop. You know, let's impeach him for this. Oh, that's not going to work. Let's let's and, impeach him for that. And do you think they would go after DeSantis just like they go after Trump? Yes. Yes. I then, think then, any Republican that's getting there right now is going to be just Then hammered. go with Trump. Fuck it. If the divisiveness is going to be there anyway, I know he's got the balls to do what needs to be done. And and DeSantis, if DeSantis and, and can be he VP may, He may pave over, the way for a better 
uh, selection of presidents. He's going to pave the way. He's going to pave the way of how I'm okay the with big that. tech, uh, you know, fuck that. Let let them use Trump as a scapegoat yeah, to pave the be, way let, for the future. In presidents. other words, let him be the uh, the sacrificial lamb. Yeah, and just, he doesn't just care. Set up to set. Yeah, he doesn't <clears throat> care. You know, he's already a billionaire. His family, his family's yep. family. His they're set for generations. Yeah. You're and right. It doesn't and at matter. At this point, he's doing things for the right reasons. And you know what? When he walks up and he hugs the American flag, what other president has ever done that? I miss that. Oh, yeah, he hugged it. What? That's you know, awesome. When did he do that? Well, he did that like one of the first things he was in office. He went up to the American flag and gave it a hug. And they he must, loves the United States. And they tore him up for that, didn't they? I'm sure they did. I don't know. Did they mock him mercilessly? I'm sure there's memes and all kinds of stuff. I want to see that. Yeah, right there. There he is. What a... But America loved that. They, we did. The majority of America loved that. You know, and, and, and that's... And he's kissing the flag, too. That, Look at him. <laughs> that, to me, says a lot. Because I don't see... It, it's not just... I'm not talking specifically about Biden. I'm talking about the Democrats. I don't believe the Democrats love America the way. No, they don't. They, I, I just, I don't believe it. They want to rebuild it. They want to rebuild it in the image that you know, they have of it. They, they constantly want change, and they want. We are at a starting point. The Democrats said we are at a starting point, and this is we want the end game to be over here. Republicans, I should say, like Donald Trump and where we're at with the Republican Party, they're kind of like, hey, man, we're here now. Right. We love here now. And let's let's keep America great. Let's keep the direction rolling. And they just want to dumb it down to it's make amazing it amazing how people depended on them. It's, that, that's what's very disheartening about our American politics is how he can do all these things. America first, jobs and everything was going great. And then and then, of course, COVID hit. But. But my point is, yeah, and but then there's a change. Now they're saying that the COVID hit because I know they're that. trying to, to get rid of Trump. Yeah, no, I get that. But my point is, then you have a change in presidency. and 150 days, it's the antithesis. And, and 100 executive orders undo everything. That, everything. And, and a lot of these things are, are so petty, so childish. Oh, I know. It's like the, the Garden of Heroes. He's going to undo that. Why? Why? Just because Trump did it. Right. That's it. It's so childish. They it's are so, they're wanting I, to erase him. Anything he did, it didn't matter if it was good for the country, it didn't matter if it worked. The border thing worked. Everything worked. I I went through all these examples of things that worked, and they just well, it's Trump. It's Trump. So we have to undo it. It's literally childish. It is. It is. And no. now we have a senile, eighty something year old man who's not even calling the shots. Running Can't even walk up a flight of stairs. Yeah. Did you see that uh, that uh, press secretary, Jen Psaki? She's a piece of work. She man. said that he is so in shape, it's hard to keep up with him. Oh, really? Yes. Really? Even he's though such I, a machine. I, even though I see him walking like an old man. No, he's oh, pounding down he those stairs. He does this little hop thing. You know it's, what I'm talking like about? he walks on his toes or something. Yeah, he, he he's doing this little, okay... I just need to walk straight and, and, and make sure I keep pick my feet up in case I'm going to stumble. Um, I'm, I he, yeah, it's bad. One of these days, he's going to be walking out there. He's just going to crater, and he's probably going to get killed. <laughs> he's going to break his shoulder. Yeah, or he's going to fall down Air Force One <clears throat> stairs and die. Well, I I don't wish that on him. I don't either. It's just I think it's we've talked about this before. I think it's it's, it's child, just it, it's child abuse. call a spade it's a spade. El, it's elderly just, abuse is what it is. Actually, it it is kind of. And you know they they're riding on his coattails, and they're riding on Obama's coattails. Is what they're doing. Correct. They're they're basically it's the old administration. It is hundred percent. Manhattan District Attorney convenes special grand jury in Trump probe. They just can't let him go. They you know? can't. They can't they stop. Cannot let him go. Well, and it's because they know he's coming back. Yep. They're doing everything they can to make sure he never comes back. I mean, they tried to impeach him when he was out of office. I mean, come on. Even if he doesn't come back, they want— No, they did impeach him out of office. They did. And even if he doesn't come back, they want to completely delegitimize him. I know that. To where he can't help. That's right. That's how terrified they are of him. Yeah. Despite half the country supporting him vehemently. All right, so we have to end. We I don't know if we're ending soon, but we, we, All right. we have to have a fun topic now. How the hell— does this computer 
know that we went to Ikea and bought that exact thing. Because Big Brother is watching, brother. Really? I, we did not search on this computer. That bed. It's listening. Is the, I think it is. It is. The computer's not listening. Is that, uh, but you, it's you not had your t- personal email on there, right? I did. Yes, I did. There you go. But I did not log on to this, but my wife packets looked at it on her phone, showed me on her, maybe it was on my phone she showed me. You know, Paul would know more it's, about this it's, stuff it's because he worked in crazy. that industry where he would steal company. people's information. Super creepy. Super creepy. But this computer, outside of, I logged in today on my Outlook, on my Hotmail, mm-hmm. and other than that, there is absolutely zero tie to me. And I didn't use my Hotmail to look or log into Ikea or anything like that. Yeah. So I did work for the company that had the creepy, you search for this, and then every single website you go to from then on, the ads are what you previously searched on or similar things, right? And they know they know everything about you, right? So they're trying to get to the point where they... Um, they're tar- let's yeah, say right there. Let's say they're trying to target. Yeah, there you go. That's that. That's that family. That IKEA, whatever the hell that word is. That's what she's building out there. Right. So let's say they are targeting um, young single black women. That's their audience. They're looking for single, uh, you know, single black women. They know enough information about. They're the people that buy products that um, they they know that, let's just say you were that, right? And you were walking into a mall. They know you're there. They know you're there because of geofencing. Sure, because of the phone. Because of the phone. And they know, yeah, that Jeff, that you are single black and you're a female. And they are sent and they're sending you texts. Check this. They're sending you texts. They know that you bought a shawl, right, last week or two weeks ago, three they, months they ago. They want to know if you have the matching li- they skirt. Have, they, believe it or not, yep, they have, they have something to match that. And they tell you, if you come right now, we know you're in the mall, and if you, and if you buy it today, 20% off. Today, today only, because we know you're in the mall. Yeah, that was going on. Incredible. They were talking about that when I worked at, uh, pennies. Yeah. And they're wanting, because that's when the phones started coming out. And they're like, how can we have advertising as you walk through the store Geofencing. to change as I walk through the store? Yep. So they'd have these big monitors that says, okay, well, Sean's walking through and he buys this type of jean and this type of shirt. I'm going to show it on the monitor. Yeah. So when he goes by, someone else comes, it changes to what he likes to buy. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what they were wanting to do. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I, I mean, it's amazing. That, but that's what they were talking I mean, it's about. Creepy. Wanting to do. It's super creepy, but it's amazing. And it's all based on data, well, data, you know, data, data. I don't, sir, so, look, in the, I'm not, I'm, I don't like people spying on me, that kind of stuff. But for the experience of, uh, uh, to make it easier for me, yeah. I, I, why not? I mean, if I were to have something, let, let's say, let's say it's my cell phone, okay. And if I were to do, I, I mean, if I were to do certain searches, I, I, but I would like to choose. So I would probably like to say, hey, you know what? If I want a, a, my private side, I want to search on something that's my private side. But if I if I want to, if if I know that I want help looking for, like right now, I'm looking for a toolbox for my garage, right? All right. So at this point, I want to be chased down right. to buy a toolbox. Yep. So I don't find that a problem. So if I, if I want to do a search on a specific app that would charge my interest in it by doing all these proactive searches, hats off to them. I want to know. I'm looking. I'm shopping. And I want that, to buy a toolbox. No, I'm and opposite of that. I don't want any of that. Well, here's the thing. That's a great point. So a lot of this stuff is based on loyalty programs, Right. So you shop all the time at Home Depot. You want the points. So you create a membership with, with, with Home Depot, and then you click on the let me know. Let me know if you have uh, 
deals on this and that. Right. And so a lot of this stuff is opting in, right? You can opt out I, I, and you opt in. I have the Kroger card, right? So, because, you know, you save money and you get gas points and shit like course, that. Of course, yeah. But they said targeted coupons because, you know, I buy this type of cheese or whatever and they'll yeah. send me coupons for that. They're very targeted. Which is fine. And uh but they don't they don't email me. They don't reach out to me and, and shit like that like they that. would. They would, but you probably opted out. Well no, it's just uh, there's no option, I don't believe. I don't it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I don't want I don't want what I search here on my yeah, phone to pop up there. Yes. It's creepy. On a computer that shouldn't have that information. Yeah, it's creepy. I don't like that. I don't either. It's a little in, it's a little intrusive. Yeah. Yeah, that is. I mean, considering that that's a that's not your computer. Yeah. And you may have logged on. So look, just because you logged on to that computer once, I mean, I could log on to that computer and it's going to do the same thing with me. But is it going to do both? I don't know. Maybe once you purge I, honestly, the internet even, settings. Yeah, I don't know how it works. I don't I don't know how it knows. I mean, the only way you can think of think of that is if things are listening. I think that's happening as well. Right. So if that laptop is listening and that laptop knows that you have another um, device. Well, of course. I mean, you, or you, I mean, but it knows things. It, it well, knows like where my, it's this, putting this things. This tablet right here. This tablet right here. It's listening. If it, it is. In fact, if I were to, uh, if I were to go to the settings on this bad boy, how were they at? You know, we, we talked about Alexa. Um, yeah. Look, see how right? it says she, she is listening. sync is on. What does that mean? Sync means that um, it syncs across all of your accounts that you're logged in. Uh, my a uh, Google accounts, right? And they're Correct. everywhere. Yeah. So you know, and then like right now, I could say to my my phone, I can say, "Okay, Google." I don't know if it's going to populate there, but it sure will on my phone. Right. Especially okay. when you belching into it. Especially when you, belch, it especially when you belch into your phone. Is that your way of activating it? Actually, I don't know why it's not working right now, but I farted actually, it's on probably, my phone. Oh, hold on. Because it's listening, it's like, oh, we need to turn this off what's, so what's they can't her, prove it. What's the uh, the right. guy's name? The actor's name? To Kevin, us. Kevin Spacey. <laughs> your experiment is totally sucking right now. Well, yes. Well, I had, in all fairness, for the podcast, I have muted my phone. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Nice. We need to watch the newest ones. I'm about halfway through. I've that never season. watched it. You need to watch it. I know. I You've know. never watched any of it? Never. You need to. It's you got to you gotta give it time because it's a sense of humor that uh, is a little different. And it's fast and it's lots of talking. And it's yeah, fast it's talking. witty. Witty. Super witty yeah. humor. Yeah, and you got to listen. Yeah, oh, a lot of Shakespearean. Well, well, that uh, plays me out, doesn't shit. it? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, I, I, I use the word Close Shakespearean. hard. Close captioning so fast. So fast. I can't read. I can't read it fast enough. Right. Well, you can really see the difference between the the bottles. So we got this Balcones bottle, and we we're already <laughs> down about a fifth or no, of the bottle. I nice. am. Yeah, hey, that's all, Paul. Yeah, but I am. The last bottle Freaking barely pansies. hit the shoulder. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'll have some. <laughs> really? That's what. It yeah. <laughs> Wait till happens at the end of the night. <laughs> Look at how we just dialed it. Damn, dude. I gotta drive you home. I don't want you throwing up in my my brand new Jetta. <laughs> this is my first shot, though. God, that's your second or third. Are you okay? You're seeing stars. <sighs> I just burnt the skin <laughs> off the back of my throat. I know. What are you thinking? That's can, still okay, oh can, my I, God. can I ask another question? Can we I back just off? Took a load can, from can, lava. Can we? Can we back off? The, uh, the, no. the 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 premise that the no. only thing we need to buy from now on is something 140 <laughs> no. plus 140 it's the bar. yeah the bar is at 139 proof now you know there are lots of of 80 <laughs> proof bourbons. no but it's got to taste good I, I, and, I, and okay. you know what the hundred it was good time out remember uh, TX whiskey 80 proof yeah well that's I'm not more saying like there's dessert. not good ones out there 80 proof. But it's we're like finding a, a lot of good ones. We need to back off of this. Oh, what, hey, what's the highest octane? <laughs> what's the highest proof you have here? Uh, well, we do have 172 proof uh, over in this uh, in this case over here. Let's and, buy and it. I don't care how much it costs. 
I mean, can we get off of the the, the ridiculous proof bourbons for once? <laughs> no. Uh, yes, look, we can. We, okay. we can. We're you can do what you want. We, we are I, literally walking down the aisle going, oh, this I looks good. Oh, it's enjoy only the bourbon that... <laughs> we need to stop. Is, I, I enjoy the flavors that come out between 115 and 120. No. Don't you? I like 100 proof and above. I can promise you there's some 80 to 95 proof there bourbons are. There are some good, I'm not that saying. we are passing up because, oh, oh yeah, my well, God. I, I also like That's Tootsie Rolls. That's so Rose. weak. Ooh. That's for the biggest really? pansies ever. I have no problem with that. I have no problem buying lower proof Okay, proof stuff. really? So two to one, you lost. Well, I don't have it's to just, partake. We, we've talked about <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't have to partake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what are we thinking tonight? Oh, it's 80 proof? Yeah, oh. I'll go. Uh, to, I'll go what? to my nose. You belt. know what, guys? I'm gonna pass. <laughs> I'll drink wow. 15 beers. It's the Sean pass. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good ones in the 94, 96. Yes, yeah. yeah. there's a ton of bourbons out there that we're passing on because they're weak. I'm not like, passing like on 84. Them. I'm not passing on them. That one that I bought, like Backbeat. Yeah, you know, like Backbeat. Oh, and now we're throwing out all the shitty ones that I picked, huh? <laughs> like Williamsburg. Oh, well, coconut. that had coconut. Hold on, tell me. <laughs> like 84. <laughs> you already said that one, dummy. <laughs> God, if you're gonna if you're gonna like gang up on me, make sure you do it. I at wasn't the same ganging time. up on you. Oh, you're all. I ganging was just up reciting bad pop bourbons. <laughs> Whatever. It's a coincidence that they happen to be yours. No. <laughs> no. The well was it? That's so two, shitty. It was two weeks well, I don't ago. Like, we all missed. I don't like two that weeks ago, that old weeks monkey ago. that you guys drink too. That oh, stuff's that disgusting. That stuff is fantastic. It's I, a good mixer. I'm out of it. And mix it with Dr. Pepper. I'm telling you, I'll try that next it's time. the shit. And I drank all of it mixer. the other night. I drank the rest of my bottle. Are you kidding? No. You know what? You sons of bitches. I'm going to end up buying Old Monk and Dr. Fucking Pepper. It's fantastic. I like it with uh, Sprite. That was and la- you were turned on f- with Old Monk night. by some I, I Indian drank, friends, uh, colleagues of yours? three of them last night. I did. I you, were, you were turned on uh, to Old Monk by some Indian colleagues of yours? Oh, yeah. So is this something that came as uh, It's from India. Is Old it? Monk. It's from India. It's an Indian yes. rum. It's an Indian rum. And we were, <sighs> you know, a lot of those Indian restaurants are BYOB. So we stopped at Total Wine on the way. Uh, we had already been drinking at Happy Hour. Rum. We had already been drinking at Happy Hour. We decided to stop at Total Wine. He picks up a bottle of Old Monk. We pick up some Coke. That's we it. go to this Indian restaurant where it's BYOB. And uh, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. Old Monk is some. It's, it's cheap. It's cheap it's too. Sixteen bucks for a seven fifty. Really? Yeah. yeah, it's good. Do they make a tanker? No, not a, not a total wine. No, they don't. Oh, what's that? What's that? Do they sell a keg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they sell a keg. It's but, really yeah, good. I go through a bottle. Well, I don't go through it as fast as you do, but it's a couple weeks. No, it's very. Hey, Mr. Producer, on the far right, it's very seldom it says that Old I drink Monk Old Monk Supreme up top, top, top. Top right there, boom. Yeah, Jeff is very. I'm kind of curious what that is. That I drink oh, it. look at there! You, it comes with a caricature of no, is the hat. Is the hat the bottle lid? I don't think the same. Thing. And they dip the head in gold. No, they don't. So you basically that's not the same. Thing. You get a you get a bottle of old monk. It is. It is the same. It is the same. It kind of tankard is in that bottle. It kind of comes uh, like like you'd get those old cologne bottles. You know, where it's shaped like a like a car or it's like a Russian stack doll. I love it. I would love to have that bottle. So, I have to ask somebody who's who's in India to, to that. buy the that whole, and bring the whole it to head me. Head comes off. Yeah, you could keister that. Yeah. Oh come on! What's wrong with you, you guys? Guy? That served to warm. Wow. That's why the. I'm speechless. I wonder how much that bottle is, though. You could tell we've had too much. We start talking about yeah, keister old monk bottles. Not me. Get what? It. So go to shopping on that. I'm just curious to see how much that. How big is, is that? How big is it? So, is, oh, it's seven fifty. Yeah, so thirty I mean, bucks. So the Supreme is only thirty bucks. It's good stuff, man. It's very unique. It I is. like Old Monk. It's very Not. unique. It's very unique. I like it. Again, I think it's nasty straight. Oh, I would never drink it straight. Yeah, but it's really good as a but mix it with Dr. All right, Pepper. All right, you know what? So you you agree with me that it's nasty straight? It is. It is. But it's great with the mixer. Yeah. Yeah. 100% mixer. I, I agree with you, too. I don't drink it straight. No. Hell, I haven't even tried it straight. I have. <laughs> it's not good. No. You have, and it wasn't good. It's no. Yeah. I, that turned me off. I was like, no, nah, I ain't doing it. No. Drink it with Dr. Pepper. Yeah. All right. Pretty uneventful uh, podcast for the end of May. 
But we, I don't think we, so. we brushed up on a lot of topics. Dude, we covered lots of things tonight. Yeah. What were you guys seem underwhelmed? Well, I was kind of thinking about you. I feel underwhelmed about that. I about me <laughs> about Paul. No, wow. no, no. About his choices in um, bourbons. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Hey, look, I'm not the one that chooses to have a golf outing over hanging out with your buddies. It's a team outing at work. I don't have a choice. Thank you, I'm guys. Not the one we'll see you next it. week. Bye-bye. Oh. Jackass. <laughs> Dude. Good music.